Um, I think in answer to Dean's question, I think it's um, I think you always would when it's such a a fickle industry, you know, where one minute you're good enough and the next minute you, you're not. Um, you know, I remember clearly between the ages of about uh, 13 and 14, obviously when I was released by Everton, saying I'm not big enough, I'm not strong enough, stuff that's sort of how you remit, really, what you can control. Um, I remember thinking, you know, will I ever grow? Will I ever be big enough? And, and obviously at that stage of your life, you're, you're getting careers advice and so on and so forth at school. And I remember speaking to the careers advice and she asked me what I wanted to be. And I was like, a football. And she was like, that's not probably going to happen much your second career. I was like, no, I think I want to play football. Um, you know, whether it was at the top, I, I didn't know. But I always knew I'd, I'd make a living because obviously I'd, my father had played non-league and earned, you know, okay money, you know, a couple of hundred pound a week and so on and so forth. And I always thought, well, I'll, if I have to work, I'll work and I'll find a job and I'll play football, you know, on a Saturday or, you know, at non-league level. So it was the only thing I knew how to do. It was the only thing I was, you know, excelled at really. And, um, you know, I was prepared to put the hours in, 10,000 hours, and I probably got nowhere near the 10,000 hours, but here I am today. And no matter what anyone ever told me, I always believed that was what I wanted to be. And I always believed, you know, um, that was what I could be. And I think the difficulty is, you know, people who get injured, I mean, because you could have all the will in the world and if you could pay for a bad injury, it's difficult. So, um, you know, I don't know what I've done across that, that bridge. And, you know, the, 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 the thing for me was, unfortunately, I never had to to make that choice because, you know, I just kept working away and eventually I grew and, um, you know, I made the most of the opportunity that, that presented itself. Greatest players for me of all time. See, it's difficult, it's such a subjective topic, this. Very, very, um, you'll, I'm gonna upset people by if I leave people out or not. I would have to go with, I believe the modern day game is better than everything that's gone before. Um, you know, people, players are quicker, stronger, fitter, play more games at a higher intensity, so on and so forth. So I'm not gonna put them in any order, but I'm gonna name the three players. I would have to say Messi's got to be in there. He's the best I've ever seen. Um, you know, he has everything. I think he would have been successful in any era. Um, and, th and that, for me, has to be where the test stands up. You know, would they have been successful in any era? And I know people will say, yeah, they would if they were given the opportunity, whether it's through nutrition or fitness and so on and so forth. But I think Messi is the best that's playing the game currently. So he would have to be up there. Um, and obviously that would entail sort of Ronaldo, which I'm going to leave out because um, I think Messi's the best of that generation. Um, but obviously Ronaldo probably will be pushing for it as well. I think you cannot get away from Maradona. I think Maradona, when you see videos of him, and I was you know far too young to remember him at his peak. Um, but he was, you know, the goal he scores against England. Not only that, but when you look at what he did at Napoli, you know, he single-handedly. I know. You know, had a couple of decent players around him. I mean, um, I think Bebeto was there. Was Bebeto there? No. It was the centre forward, the Brazilian centre forward. Napoli. At Napoli with him. Carreja. Carreja. Um, so I know he had a couple of good players around him. Um, but I mean, you, you see the footage of, of what he was doing. You know, chipping keepers with, from, from the penalty area. I mean, outrageous goals. Um, and at that time, you know, Italy wasn't an easy place to play. You know, you had some of the world's top players in there and it was a very physical league. I mean, a lot of the people who, who knock Maradona sort of knock him on what he did at Barcelona. Um, you know, they say he never succeeded at Barcelona. Um, and then you would have to agree with them on that basis. You know, he wasn't what he was for everyone else. For, but when he, you know, but when you see some of the physical treatments he was getting, if, if anyone has seen it or anyone who hasn't seen it should watch the Bilbao game. And build bio players systematically one after the other just take him out and I think he ends up with a broken ankle at the end of the game you know this is not modern day football where one bad tackle you take a red card this is this was you know when you when you think of the the World Cup and the Italian centre half uh, what was his name Animal uh, what was his name centre half in the 80s he met Mark Maradona and systematically just got stuck into him. Gentile, 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 was Gentile. 
he just literally just followed them around for 90 minutes, just kicking them as hard as he could time after time. And I think after about 80 minutes, he got a yellow card and he, he must have attacked them about 13 times at that point. So for that reason, I would have to say he has to be in there. Not only is he the greatest player, but I think he played in an era when there was the greatest physical provocation for players who had his talent. Um, you know, people who argue that, you know, Messi, Maradona, would Messi be able to, you know, withstand the treatment uh, that Maradona get? Well, I've seen Messi take a few challenges and he generally gets up, smiles and gets on with it. Probably why I've left Ronaldo out is the fact that he doesn't. You know, Cristiano Ronaldo, when he was in England, certainly, you know, he's tough and he's a, he's a great player, but he did, like, the ground a bit too much for my liking. You know, Messi and Maradona, two things they have in common is the fact that they took the physical abuse. Not all, well, Maradona could give it, but Messi tends to just smile and, and, and get on with it, you know. So for, the, for that reason, I'm putting them in for toughness alone. And the third player is probably the most favourite player of mine from the most favourite team of, of mine I've ever watched. It'd have to be Johan Cruyff. Um, you know, the Dutch team, 70, 1970 onwards, 70 to probably 78, epitomise what great football was for me. And never won anything, you know, they never won... Um, Although, you know, they, they, they probably should have beat West Germany in the, in the final, but they never, um, you know, that, that side. And, you know, you not only look at what Cruyff did as a player, I mean, he you know, he changed the game as a player, but what he subsequently has done, you know, everyone thinks, um, you know, what everyone thinks of Barcelona as the greatest modern day team, you know, certainly the, 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 the authors of, of beautiful football. I mean, Cruyff started that. Although Ren Rennie Michels was, was sort of there, you know, as the, as the Holland manager, Cruyff, if you read anything about Barca and you read anything about their history, I think everyone's admitting that when Cruyff comes and he comes in a managerial stroke director of football capacity, that that things start to motor. You know what we're seeing now is the seeds that 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 Cruyff and Cole were putting in place, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So, um, you know, he was a great footballer to watch. Um, you know, he smoked like a chimney as well. I think he was on about 20, 46 a day. Um, so you're thinking that if he played now, no the health. Um, problems smoking causes how fit and you know how good he would be and I mean I've seen old footage of him and he, he, he sometimes when you watch them old games you see different players whether it's Eusebio Di Stefano from before whether it's George Best you know on, on videos and they seem to be on a totally different tangent to everyone else on the field I get that when I watch Messi now I don't get that when I watch Cristiano I don't get that when I watch Slatan I don't get that when I watch Ribéry I get that when I watch Messi and I get that when I watch Maradona and I get that when I watch Cruyff. I didn't get it when I watch Pelé. I fought Pelé and, and this is probably people go, how can I leave Pelé out? Well, he played in a great team. Now, I know Cruyff did. The, the 74 side, Nishkin, so on and so forth, had some great players. You know, but that, that Brazil side that Pelé played in is arguably the greatest side and, uh, until people start comparing them with the, the sort of Barcelona of a few years ago. That Brazil side, you know, is just littered with people who could arguably have a chance of getting in this um, top three. You know, no, but none of us, it's interesting that none of us have talked about keepers or, or defenders because unfortunately, you know, goals are what people remember, people who score key goals at key times, hence why the, the, the three players have selected is are all offensive players. I mean, you could argue, make an argument for 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 lots and lots of players over the test of time. They're just three that stick in my mind, no doubt. I'll get a countless number of comments and people tweeting me and Facebooking and telling me how wrong I am, but you know, that's just my opinion and I'll make of it what you will. Yeah, I uh, I haven't. I've probably I've done a ten k somewhere, but I, I've not really won for. I mean, it's difficult for us because we're running a lot of the time with the ball. Phil, who's forty five from Lancaster, Lancaster, or Lancashire, Lanks, Lanks. Lanks, just Lancs. Yeah, thanks for clearing that up. Yeah. Um. So cheers for the detail of where you, where you're from, where you live. It's not it's not blind date. Um. Yeah. It's it, it. I mean, it's an enduring sport. I mean, obviously, you've got to be the fitter you are, the the the, the easier it should be. But it's difficult it's in pure running terms because you've got to manipulate the ball at the time or you know, you're thinking about the space you're going into or where someone could go, so on and so forth. So it's not as straightforward as just running. I think if you're a really good athlete, I think 
as I said before, it, it does help, but it's not the be all and end all. I mean, hence why some quick players, uh, all the quick players, for instance, aren't playing at the top. It's people who have speed of thought, speed of um, vision, or so on. And you know, there's so many other uh, factors that are unseen and probably aren't. You're not able to test for. I mean, Ray, Wayne Rooney is probably as quick and strong as you've come across, but he also thinks quicker and sees pitches that probably other players don't see. But that's probably what makes him stand out more than. Um, the fact that he's big and strong and quick. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of different factors. Where would I be on a half marathon? I mean, I've always been good at running, so um, I'm surmising I'd be relatively fit. I mean, I did cross country in school and so on and so forth. And while I never, I never excelled at it in terms of I never won everything at that sort of regional level, I was always fairly decent and was more of a, more of a plodder. You know, more sort of someone who. Um, grafted, I was more of a grafter really uh, than a natural athlete and I've always had to graft at it and you know you think in a game I think I'm probably about 12k, 11, 11, 12k a match, sometimes 13, sometimes probably 10 and a bit um, but generally for the uh, the course of the season it'll be you know between 11 and 12k, some players get to about 13, I don't actually think I've seen anyone at 14k although there has been rumours that people have done it. But then, you know, for me, the key things are, you know, I mean, people get obsessed with stats and stats can give you quite good pointers. You know, you look at the passing stats and so on and so forth, but, and there's a lot more to it than that. You know, you can give the ball away quite a lot, but, you know, for instance, the one time you get it through that creates a goal and great, and you know, other players who pass sideways and backwards all the time and get high completion rates, but actually achieve nothing with the football. At the end of the day, the game's about scoring goals, and I think the key stat that counts is how many you keep at one end and how many you put in the other end. We can argue, you know, stats give you do do give you good indicators and, and, and good pointers about where you maybe can get stronger or where you're a little bit weak. But the key thing is um, the score. 